Hello, my name is George, and um, today I'm going to be walking through a card counting program that I made. I took a Python course last uh, fall, and I really enjoyed it, so I've been taking online courses and about a couple of textbooks, and I've been just kind of going through those. And I created this program myself, and I thought it was something that adequately displayed what I've learned so far in Python, um, just basic Python uh, programming, how to um, manipulate data structures, how to build them up, uh, methods and functions, classes, inheritance, and things like that. So I created this card counter program. First, I'm going to just run the program, um, show it to you guys, and then just run through it here. And then if you'd like to uh, stay after that, I'm going to run through the code that I created for it. So the card counter program, it, when run, it shows this interface. And you type in the number of decks that is being used for whatever card game you're playing. For example, we can do two decks of cards. We'll press our enter button here. It will let us know that um, we have updated it with two decks and we have our remaining cards here. So it's the number of cards. So we have eight aces, eight kings, et cetera. It'll tell us the remaining suits. So currently it's there we have a full deck. So it's 25 of each suit. And as the game is being played, cards will be dealt. For example, we have an ace clubs. We'll remove the card. When it's when it's out of the deck now we'll have a card removed text that comes up that goes away and we can see that our aces went down to seven and our uh, clubs should have gone down to 25. we can since there's two decks we can remove another ace of clubs perfect and then if you try to remove another ace of clubs let's say you forgot to change the suit um, it won't let you remove it because there's no more card in the deck so you have text that comes up there and, and notifies the user of that. Then as you're going through the game, so let's say, uh, depending on what game you're playing, this could be helpful. If you're playing blackjack, for example, and you're dealt a 16 and you wanna know the probability of receiving a two, three, four, or five, so that you don't bust, you can enter in those target cards, press enter, and it'll let you know the probability of receiving those cards and change it up. Even if it didn't make sense, for example, like even if they didn't go together, you can do that. It'll tell you the percentage there. Then let's say you start a new game or the deck is being shuffled. Go ahead and hit our reset button. We'll clear the remaining cards, clear the remaining suits. It will clear our instance variables that we've been using and building up as we went through this. And then you can just start all over again with the how many decks you're using. So that is the basic premise of this card counting program. And I will uh, include my link to my GitHub so you can see this code if, if this is a program that you'd like to run for any reason. Um, but now I'm gonna go through the actual code quickly and kind of touch base on some things that I learned, some things that I thought were interesting and um, just kind of showing what I've learned in Python so far. So keep this here. First, we're gonna import Tinter, which is the, Python library, which allows us to create GUIs or graphical user interfaces that we're able to show to uh, the user. We create the class card counter. Uh, this allows us to manipulate data, um, manipulate variables easily between different methods. So instead of using global variables, we're able to um, create instance variables that are, we're able to use in each one of our methods. This is a subclass of um, TK or Kinter. So we're calling the super method here within our init um, method. And this allows us, or init uh, constructor, constructor, which allows us to um, create the interface and allows us to use the methods here from TK. So we configure the root window, which is just this main, this, this, this main window here. Card counter, the title. It's not resizable, just to keep it simple. We have the number of decks which is gonna be this text here. We have an entry, which is this the blank box here. It's an int var. So um, it's gonna take an integer and um, it's gonna pass it to the number of decks. And we, we can call a get method in our methods to um, grab that number that the user inputs. Number of decks button. So this is gonna be the enter button that's pressed here. It has a command, which is the create deck method that we have, which will use the number of decks that we put in the entry. Number of decks result labels. So this is the result label that comes down here. We have the remove cards text, 
which is going to, it's all this text down the side, these three rows. Remove cards entry, which is going to be these two rows here. And then the remove card buttons. So these are both string vars. Um, just to keep it simple, these were strings, even if it was going to be, you know, a seven, which could be an integer, because we have ace, king, queen, just keep it as a string is, is much more simple. So we set these um, instance variables here. And then um, remove card button. So when the button is pressed, we have the card removed, which is calling that method here. Remove card result label. So this is the two, there's two results labels here, right? So when we remove the card, it'll let you know the card removed. We already removed a seven of clubs before. So if we try to remove another one, the card is not in the deck, which is result label two. Target card text. So it's just this right here, target card button target card uh, result label. So it's gonna just be right, right there. It's letting you know the probability and um, that button is gonna call this method here. One press. Remaining cards uh, label and result. So it's gonna be this down here, down the right hand side. This doesn't have to call any methods because it's just showing the result of other methods. We have a reset button, which will call the reset deck method which resets all of these widgets like it is does there. And then the count suits label and results. So similar to remaining cards, it does the same thing. So our first method is the create deck method. So this is gonna create the, and update the deck based on the user input. So user inputs two decks. This is what's going to be run when that's called, when we press that enter button. So first we have our card deck here, which is a dictionary. The keys are HDCS, which stand for hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. And then this is each card that can be in that suit. So now we're gonna create duplicates of the card. So if we did two, we need to have two aces here instead of just one, two kings instead of just one. So for X and suit list, so it's gonna iterate through this list here, and then it's going to append it to this new suit list here. So if this number of decks.get, which this is the user in input, if this is a two, it's gonna loop through this twice. So it's gonna append ace to the new suit list twice, if that's the number of decks we're using. Next, we're gonna update the card deck. So for suit in card deck, which is this um, card deck suit. So it's gonna go through the keys uh, it's going to go through each one. So, for example, if we're iterating through this, hearts new suit list dot copy. So it's going to take this new suit list that we made and it's going to um, assign it to the value of hearts. We have to use the dot copy uh, method so that when we're assigning it to the diamonds and clubs and iterating through that, it's a different object. If we didn't do this, if we didn't do the dot copy and we removed the seven of clubs, it would also be removed from the seven of spades, seven of diamonds, and seven of hearts, because they would all be the same list object. This is just going to uh, update the return text when this uh, enter button is pushed. And then this is going to create another instance variable, which is the cards remaining. So it's going to loop through this entire dictionary, and it's going to take all of these items, and it's going to sum them up into a single list that we're going to use throughout the methods. And then we also, when we press this enter button um, to update the decks, it's going to call two other methods, count suits and count cards, so that these are updated automatically as well, the, the text here. The next method that we have is the count cards method, which gives the counts the remaining cards and gives the probability of receiving each card, which is shown here on the right side. So for card and faceless, so for ace, king, jack, 10, it's going to iterate through that. It's going to populate this new dictionary, this empty dictionary, and it's going to set the keys. Instead of the keys being suits, the keys are going to be the values. And then it's going to take um, the count of that card. So it's going to iterate through the remaining cards list that we created, and it's going to count the number of cards each time. So there's going to be eight aces, and then it's going to take that eight divided by the length of the cards remaining and multiply it by 100 to get our percentage. Now, the next thing that I thought was interesting here is we have to translate this dictionary into a string so that it's printable on the right-hand side. We can't just take this all cards probability, which contains the all the cards here and the probability of each card, 
and slap it right on our interface. It has to be put into a string, um, a printable result string here that we're defining and then put on our interface. So four key and all cards probability. So this is gonna iterate through each card, right? Uh, printable results plus equals. So we're gonna append this list up here, key, which is uh, eight, or yeah, which is, sorry, this is gonna be our um, card. So ace and then the probability of it. And then for printable results, we when we make the list, we started out with the length of the cards remaining, which is just putting 104. And then this is going to be a new line character here. So it's going to print down the side. And then after we complete going through that loop, we're going to change this label to have the text printable results that we just made. The next method is account suits method. So this is going to be down here in the bottom left corner. We're gonna, it's pretty similar to the count remaining cards. It's gonna do for suits. So we have an empty dictionary. We're gonna go through each suit in the deck list and we're just gonna take the length of um, the length of the length of the values of that. So for example, here we're just gonna have however many cards are in that suit. Then similar to what we just had to do for count cards, we have to translate the dictionary to a string so that is printable. So it's gonna be the same loop, um, but in this one, we're gonna, instead of printing it down the page, instead of having backs, uh, the backs slash N, we're going to just print on two lines. So it's gonna loop through it, it's gonna add one to the new line, and then it's gonna go printable results, and then it's gonna put the backs slash N there afterwards, so we can just have it on two lines instead of going all the way across or all the way down. And then this just assigns that uh, the, the printable results because we can't put the dictionary in there. Next method is the remove card method. So here what's going to happen is um, when it's it's going to be this area here. So we're going to grab whatever the user puts in. So suit.get, that's what's going to happen here. It's going to grab club. It's going to assign it to suit and it's going to do the same for face. So it's going to create a new list which will contain um, all the cards in that suit. So when you press clubs or when you put clubs in there and you click remove cards, it's going to make a list of all of the uh, clubs that we have left remaining. And then it's going to index that list for the face value that we put in or just the value of the card. And it's going to um, assign that to a card index variable. And then we're going to pop that out from the card list. Now we don't have to reassign this to the deck because we didn't use dot copy here. So if we use dot copy, it would be, this card list would be a new object, but because we did self dot deck and we didn't use dot copy, this card list is the same object as this one. So when we pop it out of that card list, it's also going to pop it out of that, um, out of the deck. Then we're also gonna do the same thing for the remaining cards list, which is just the running list of remaining cards, regardless of suit. And then we're gonna return the label. So it's going to try to do this first. For example, um, we haven't touched this one yet. So we remove a card, remove a card. Now, if we try to do it again, it's not going to be able to run this. So it's going to do the accept here, and it's going to tell us card is not in the deck. What was interesting here is that we used the after from uh, Kinter, which allows us to remove that card removed or card is not in the deck, the result text that comes back. Uh, to the user so that it disappears after a while. So the user knows that it was registered and that the program ran, but it disappears because we can't have it stay up um, the entire time. And then after we remove the cards from the deck and from the remaining cards index, we need to run the count cards and count suits method so that these here are updated respectively for whatever we removed. Next is the count selected method, which is just this area here. This is going to be using, um, because it's regardless of suit, it's going to be using the cards remaining list that we've been updating as, as we've gone through each method. And it's going to go through um, each card in that list. And if the card is in the selected cards, which is this en uh, user entry here, it's going to add one to the number of selected cards. So it's going to tell us how many two queen and aces that we have in our cards remaining list. And then it's just going to assign that to an instance variable probability. 
and then it's going to be updated here so that we have this text running here. The reset deck method is going to you know, reset our deck, reset our instance variables that we've been building up when we press our reset button. And um, with Kinter, you can't just clear these widgets. You actually have to destroy them and recreate them. So that's what's happening here. Um, when you do the remaining suits, target cards right here, and remains cards list. That's what's happening there. And then this, the last method we have is the reset uh, card text. And this is what happens when um, we use the dot after, because we this one is going to be separate from these ones because we don't want to remove everything. We just want to remove this text to disappear after five seconds. So that's what this separate one is for. And we have one for the card removed label. And then we have another one for the card not removed or card is not in the deck. And then that's the end of the class. And then here we just run, we create our object. So let's run it as a card counter and we end the main loop for Kinter. So perfect, there's my program. So I'll have this code in the description uh, linked to my GitHub. So if you wanna use this program or if you know of a way to make it more efficient since I'm kind of just starting out. So if, it, if you know of any ways to make it more efficient, please feel free to let me know. And uh, thank you very much.